everybody. Welcome back to Star Wars Lads. It's been a while since we've done an episode of our Star Wars Legends book club, but we have finally concluded our reviews for the Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command. This is our review for the final book in the Thrawn trilogy. It's been anxiously awaited by a lot of you. Hopefully you enjoy our thoughts talking about this incredible novel. Make sure you're hitting that like button down below. You're subscribing to the channel if you haven't. We have a ton of Legends content on this channel, so if you're interested in Star Wars Legends, make sure you subscribe. We have a lot of theory videos about bringing Legends stuff into canon. We have other theory videos about <laughs> a tying in Legends elements with a variety of the new shows coming out. We're going to have Ahsoka stuff on here. We have Legends tier lists. We have Legends book reviews, comic reviews, all sorts of things. So if you're interested in this type of stuff, make sure you subscribe here. We also have reviews for the latest Star Wars books the day they release. So make sure if you're interested in Star Wars books, you're subscribed. All right, let's talk about this novel. This is the wrap-up novel to the Thrawn trilogy, the seminal trilogy that reignited Star Wars EU for all intents and purposes at the time and uh, gave us basically what we have today in terms of the Star Wars being a massive multimedia empire. It, it really just, we get Star Wars books like five times a year now. It wouldn't none of this would be the case without the Thrawn trilogy. Uh, we're going to talk about first the, the writing and the narrative, kind of the plot, the way Timothy Zahn constructs the plot, the way Timothy Zahn writes. We're going to talk about what we think of that overall. Sonic, give me your thoughts on the overall plot for the Last Command. I think this was really well organized because everything felt paced strongly. The real issue that I had with Dark Force Rising is ultimately every storyline felt fairly short compared to what was going on in the Heir to the Empire. And you could kind of also feel the effects of like gaps in that story as well. Dark Force Rising, it felt like everything was either too short or too long, but ultimately all of them were like not that big or important. This feels like Tim Dizon is like everything has equal priority because everything is tying together. It's great. I, I really appreciated the writing. It felt, I want to say that it felt almost as good as Heir to the Empire. There's some obvious elements that are just different at vibe wise. And I it kind of leans more on Return to the Jedi in that sense of like, this is the confrontation, all or nothing, right? And maybe it sometimes that simplifies parts of the stories and kind of keeps things a little abrupt towards the end. But it's thematically rich. It feels like everything has paced to that point to make it feel like, okay, if it's got to happen like this, I'm glad I got so much to happen in this book. And it, I like that. But again, none of it was paced poorly. That really helped me. I, I always felt energized reading it. Whereas Dark Force Rising, I'd kind of get stuck on like the Han and Lando storyline. And then the Luke stuff would come and I was like, okay, wish there was more. Leia stuff would come and go to like this. Everything feels chunked up appropriately so a really big fan of the writing he brings a little bit more almost like a necessity of becoming more extreme for the villains uh, obviously Sabayat was already crazy in Dark Force Rising we kind of saw that descent even further after meeting Luke here it just felt like yeah let's just turn him to another notch to start off the story and then go from there and I thought that was nice and he also subtly did that with Thrawn uh, I think when you read the start of this book, you feel like Thrawn is like, yeah, he's a little overconfident, but why wouldn't he be? But more towards the end, it's like, oh man, things are feeling like he's gambling a little too much. And I like how he wrote Thrawn as just kind of being very mortal, right? Sometimes you just push it too far. Sometimes you're just unable to let go of your own biases. And that's part of his big downfall, right? And it was, I liked how the, no Grease full storyline got completed here and tied directly back to him in a way it was never there. He even aired to the Empire or Dark Force Rising. And yeah, overall, great stuff. I'm very happy where they left Luke and Mara, especially. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I love the plot of this book. I'm a big fan of the plot of all of these books, but The Last Command is really the culmination of the brilliance of the Thrawn trilogy, which is purely that this trilogy not only was written to be an exact three book structure, but this was a series that when you read each book, each plot point, everything, even if it feels a bit uh, redundant or a bit slow or a bit uh, plotting, when you finally get to the last book, everything comes to a head here. He ties in every single thread he set up 
And you just see kind of the brilliance of the way he weaves the narrative throughout all three books. And I think it's a format we haven't really gone to in Star Wars canon recently. And it's a format that was the majority of releases really back in the 90s. I'd love to see them go back to that a little bit. There's something exciting about a three book structure, kind of a three act structure built across three books with each their individual climaxes and resolving action and falling or falling action. But then restarting the next phase of the journey in the following book and ultimately culminating with a finale that you can really see all of the work and dedication put into each word throughout the series poured into uh, ultimately what, what culminates into something pretty exciting and epic and, and very satisfying. I think that's the number one word when you talk about the last command is <laughs> a lot of times we get these these stories or these series that the ending's not satisfying and the last command is the furthest from that. It's truly a great ending. If a little, you know, Star Wars-y, I think the last command out of all of Zahn's books here, uh, one of the things I've always praised about his writing is the fact that he makes it feel like the original trilogy, much better than the Han Solo Orlando Calrissian adventures did before him and much better than most of what Bantam era offers after him. The thing he does in the finale is, is give you a, a more traditional what you expect style Star Wars finale, but it is on two fronts, which I thought was really nice. And also very, it's like the return of the Jedi type finale, but you get bit two big versions of it instead of just flashing back and forth between the battle of Endor and Luke and Palpatine on the death star. Now you've got huge chapters featuring Luke and Palpatine on the death star, AKA Luke and Sabaoth. And you have huge chapters with the battle with the rogues and Thrawn and all the, the ships and the dog fighting. So I loved all that. I love the way this story is structured. I love the way each character is given their due and especially his original characters. This is the book where they all shine. You get moments of Mara throughout the first two. This is a Mara book. You get moments of Talon card in the first two. This is a Talon card book. This is the one that he gives all four of his big original characters a time to shine while also wrapping up our original trilogy characters really well. I really love this book. Let's talk about the characters, though. I started to allude to it. Mara is one of the main characters of this this book. And the first two, especially Dark Force Rising, she doesn't have as much of a role. She's a part of the adventure. But Luke is kind of the main focus when we come to the Mara-Luke dynamic or the talent card Mara dynamic. Talent card's more of a focus. Here, Mara is front and center. She's involved in almost everyone's plots. And she's kind of the connective tissue across the whole thing. We also have Thrawn, like you were mentioning earlier. There's Sabaoth that comes to a head here. And uh, even the, <laughs> the you know, with that, I'm kind of spoiling the book, but this is a, the Luke clone is something people make fun of. But I've always found a, in the way Zahn wrote it in The Last Command, if it wasn't like a fun, a funny spoiler people talk about, it is actually quite an exciting twist and reveal and it's a good connection back to the lore in my opinion but we have all these elements here all these characters coming to a clash here at the end of the novel so like what were some of your favorite character moments some of the characters that stood out to you and some of your favorite arcs throughout this entire trilogy yeah i think this is the book where i actually really love talon card i think the whole like playing it neutral thing well a decent like personality to him in Heir to the Empire, always felt a little artificial. Like, why would he never take sides, really? Like, or just be most convenient when he still has all these morals. And I like how he's, like, almost a more established underworld, like, organizer as opposed to just, like, one-man wrecking machine like Han was. And, and that effect and, and his turn to becoming a rebel. Like, this is hints at, like, no, he's never going to leave that life. But he can be persuaded to do something pretty good because his morals are often like aligned with what we want to do. So I, I really liked him. So the whole, whole organization of all these smugglers was a concept that could have been pretty simple and boring, considering he already has like his own crew and stuff. But I, I like that he was on definitely about individuality to these characters and the short scenes that they did have. It makes the final, you know, heist of the CFG pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it's an interesting way of like building up a character too by having a few more new supporting characters make 
that original character even more richer and more introspective, willing to understand maybe what I'm doing is no longer possible. Uh, I like that. I like that how the changes he card himself was going under, but also things that he's also trying to maybe put to effect a short time on the underworld itself. So that was very cool. I definitely like, like you're alluding to off camera a lot more of like Thrawn and Sabayat both being just idiots, like in different ways. Like bl- Thrawn is off- obviously blind and thinks he can still control Sabayat after everything that's happened, right? But Sabayat here just goes full mad emperor crazed, and yet he still has that like interesting thing going where he kind of is like dazed and lost or like sickly even, right? Kind of building off of what was there in Dark Force Rising. But just seeing both of them like push and pull, push and pull, ultimately fracture each other's plans and fall to both of their like blind spots was a very cool storyline. Even if it's not something that develops directly between them past halfway point of the book. But it was really cool just to see like their aftershocks really shape each other and put them in a negative place. I definitely like the Leia storyline more in Dark Force Rising. I think that's where she really has more ownership. Here she kind of has to just play a supporting role. But I thought it was pretty sweet. I, I liked her interactions with Jason and Jaina. It felt very rich. And I liked the idea of like, you know, using the force to emote things like pictures and feelings for kids who don't know how to read or write. Like there are some very interesting things. I don't know if she's necessarily important for like the final battle. It just kind of just seems like everyone's got to come together. And I kind of liked her story essentially being done and then protecting what's to come. Uh, so I, I, I like parts of it and what parts there were that I really liked. Like, yeah, they were standouts for me. I don't know. I I guess Luke was still good, but uh, Luke kind of just feels like he's kind of being carried by the story and he's reacting to everything that Mara's going through because Mara's just standout. I love everything about being, you know, imprisoned on the Imperial Palace, how she wins the support of Leia, how Leia kind of plays her a little bit, how, you know, Lando and, you know, everyone else kind of starts building up that trust, Han especially, to just let this unilateral decision be made about her character. And I like how she's like fighting through it, fighting her own walls of resistance finally, instead of just blocking it all off for another day. It's the first time she's really engaging with these things that she's going to be putting at, been pushing aside. Like, what does it mean to really strike down the man that I've been working with? I keep on pushing. What does that mean? Right. Um, ultimately, how does she resolve that? You will kill Luke Skywalker final command etched in her brain. And ultimately, just like her personal feelings towards Luke, like that, at least a spark of that, right? And I, I really like that. Um, her, she has a great final battle sequence. Just you know, her like becoming her own hero was a very nice end to her plot. So, yeah, characters were really great in this one. I think that's what really drove the story for me. Yeah, I completely agree. I think this is the book that you realize Mara Jade is the main character of this whole trilogy, and she is the one that kind of unifies the the new republic and the empire it's the beginning of the healing process we start to see throughout the rest of well kind of the 90s era but ultimately all the way into what we get eventually with the form you know the the changes in government we ultimately get later on down the road in new jedi order and, and legacy of the force and all these things here in the future all the way into the legacy era but it's here that mara jade is cemented as that symbol right and i I recently made a video about why mara jade will be canon soon and one of the reasons i just think she works so perfectly with luke and one of the ways we get that perfect uh, sense of forgiveness and sympathy empathy from luke is the way he's able to connect with an imperial not just an imperial but somebody who's force sensitive worked for his greatest enemy and wants to kill him the entire trilogy. Ultimately, Luke is still able to forgive her, not only forgive her, become friends with her at the end of the series, and then eventually fall in love with her and get married. Like there's something, there's a duality there of Mara Jade that she has to basically go through like a a reconciliation process with almost every one of our major original trilogy characters where she is able to redeem herself in a different way through each of them. And ultimately comes to the point where by killing the clone of Luke, she fulfills the Emperor's final command. She uh, (laughs) removes the dark side from uh, basically surrounding and trapping her in her past. And she can move forward into a future, a better future 
that she can help shape. Uh, there's a lot I love about Mara, but I think this book does a great job at, at turning her into the character that we all love from Legends, and ultimately the character that <laughs> is someone who Luke Skywalker would actually fall in love with. You see the sides to Mara. She's multifaceted. There's so many great things about ultimately what she becomes. Uh, I love the moment at the end, their moment at the end. And I love that Luke gifts her <laughs> the lightsaber, like the legacy hilt, like that. If there's anything like the passing of the torch <laughs> in these books, it's that moment, right? And and uh, I, I love that. I love going back to that moment every time I've gone back to this book. And that's something that's really great to me. Love the final battle. I think Sebaoth and Thrawn are the perfect dynamic duo. It's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like a Palpatine and Vader, whereas you know one of them is the more mani maniacal. I'll sit back and let my pawns do it, and I'll watch. And then Vader is the brute force. Here, Sabaoth's got like the power of a Palpatine, but he's got none of the control. And Thrawn's got all of the control. And there's a push and pull of like chaos and balance that both of them are going through. They're both using each other in different ways. But the standoff between the two of them is a brilliant scene. It's some of Zahn's best villain writing. Uh, it, I think, this book, even though. Thrawn ultimately fails in this book. This one gives you a lot of Thrawn's best moments. There are a lot of times when he puts people like the New Republic in a situation where he knows they could probably beat him, but he's putting their personal uh, feelings towards innocent lives, their personal feelings towards losing a uh, face, basically against them and he plays the political game here which is something in canon Razan has made Thrawn more of a, a political novice and we might you know we're not to the point that we are in 9 ABY and these books yet in canon and we will be getting that in Ahsoka he might be better at politics and better at reading people and manipulation than he is in the early canon books final battle I love the power Sabbath has um, you know, it's it's a little cliche with some of the like destruction of the mountain self-destruct button the Lando just blowing up the, you know, that's, that's typical Star Wars. And we're going to get that in almost every Star Wars story. So you kind of just push it to the side, <laughs> in, in my opinion, and just for the greatness of having those characters all together, uh, seeing what the Nogri ultimately do uh, with Rook's, Rook killing Thrawn has always been a moment to me that is, is really, really powerful and, and one that works so well across the whole trilogy, the way uh, the two of them treat each other early in the books and, and, and Rook is much less of a friend to Thrawn than he is in Rebels. It's a very Star Wars idea of a, of a lesser equipped species <laughs> able to rise up against the mightiest, right? Like That's the Star Wars storytelling at its finest. I love basically everything about this book. That'll wrap up our Impact of Star Wars History section. Let's go to the last section we have on here, which is our overall thoughts and our final score out of five. Sonic, what would you rate The Last Command? Yeah, when I look at everything, the character, story, plot, and even some of your points, Liam, it, it's a book that I love because I couldn't put down more so than maybe a book that like the ending was brilliant or anything. There, there were some things that just felt like this is the most Star Wars he's on has been that isn't his, right? This was him leaning so much on the Lucas framework and what the trilogy had established at that point, and maybe comics or whatever else that he might have glanced at, right? So, yeah, that that was the most interesting part for me when I think about this book and consider where I would put it. It's definitely better than Dark Force Rising, because I think Dark Force Rising almost felt like a book that he did third. He did Heir to the Empire as the first half. The second half was The Last Command. How do we get some of the more separate pieces right? like yeah the sabbat story and whatever right like, yeah it, it kind of feels like kind of thrown together timeline wise kind of feels smushed and weirdly stretched out at the same time text wise everything here was paceful and i think that really did help the story but i don't know if i would consider it better than heir to the empire because there's just something so uniquely fresh but at the same point to even consider that i want to say i really like the characters a lot more i think they evolved so much in this book especially a lot of his original characters in a way that they didn't have time for in Dark Force Rising or, you know, they were still building towards like the middle act of their own stories. And the payoff is really good, uh, especially Mara Jade. I really liked her payoff. Talon Card 2 was a big hit for me. 
I like both of our villains going a little bit messed up in their own ways. And I don't know if I love them more so than I loved how our original trilogy cast got introduced in Air to the Empire. And I think that's the balancing act for me. I will give this like, I'll give it a 4.5. No, I will give this a 4.25. I think this is great, but I don't know if I can let it touch the high ceiling of the Air to Empire. It gets very close, maybe more like a 4.344, but if we're going to split it evenly, I guess 4.25. Yeah, that's a that's a tough toss up there because those two books, Heir to the Empire and The Last Command, are so different in so many ways. Uh, obviously, one kickstarts the trilogy, one ends it. One is the kind of entry point to new characters, but heavily focuses on our old. This one is the culmination of the new and the passing of the torch and kind of the the open armed hug acceptance of our new characters by the old. When you look at the whole trilogy, The Last Command, I think, has the most plot points that are the most Star Wars-y. It's it's more simple in that way, but the character work is so good. The culmination of the plot points, the way everything unfolds, is also unexpected. There are twists and turns in the midst of the big Star Wars-y finale that I loved. There are character moments here that I think are seminal for the entirety of of Star Wars Legends, and I think moving forward here in the future, hopefully in Star Wars canon. There's so much about this book that I love, and and like you, I have a hard time separating Heir to the Empire the Last Command, which one I like more. And I think that just makes me have to give The Last Command also a 5 out of 5. I love this book. I've always loved this book. I love the plot. I just love everything that happens here. Some of my favorite Star Wars characters of all time with Mara Jade and Talon Card and Thrawn all being introduced here, not to mention Sabaoth, who gets, I think, like, underwhelming amount of talk nowadays for how interesting he is. And it's even more interesting going back now, like, what is, it's 30th anniversary of this book this year, I believe. So 30 years later, it's even more interesting going back and seeing how many things have this has influenced, how many things have changed, how ideas that we know concretely, like cloning and, and, Jedi and Sith and Dark Jedi, all these things that exist now in the lore, how they concretely exist now and comparing them to how they began, how they were created, how they started here. All of that is stuff that's right up my alley of the type of Star Wars fan I am, somebody who's more of like a Star Wars historian, somebody who loves the franchise and exploring what made it what it is today. So I love this book. Going to give it a five out of five, even if it is a bit of the fanboy and me talking probably with that score. Well, you know what? Screw it. Uh, I'm convinced by the passion that you presented on that argument, Liam. So I will raise my score up to a 4.5. Yeah, there five. we go. It's, it's close. <laughs> it's close. But, you know, I'll, I'll say it's it's a one beat of 1A. That's what I'll say. Yeah, it's all it's all just in what you prefer and then what type, type of Star Wars story you prefer here. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Make sure you hit that like button down below. You're subscribed to the channel for more Star Wars Legends content. Again, we usually put it up to you guys to choose our book for Legends Book Club. So we'll let you know when that choice is available here in the future. When you picked Heir to the Empire way back in March, we just decided to go with the whole trilogy. So I haven't been polls about that, but uh, we will get back to letting you guys help decide what we do here for future episodes. Also, make sure you're commenting below, letting us know what you thought of not only The Last Command, but the Thrawn trilogy in general. Make sure you check out the polls. We have polls going for our best animated Star Wars character bracket. You can vote in the play-in matchups right now before the tournament kickstarts at the end of the week. Make sure you're voting on that as well. If you're interested in more stuff pertaining to Uh, the Thrawn trilogy. I do have a reading guide for Mara Jade coming out here soon. I also have a guide. It's kind of more of a watching guide, but it's also a reading guide semi for Ahsoka. Everything Ahsoka you can check out before the show starts. We will be covering the Ahsoka show completely on this channel. So if you're interested in our predictions and speculation, our reviews of every single episode, make sure you're subscribed and you hit the notification bell so you get all of our latest content immediately as it drops. We're also doing live streams every single week for Republic Commando, and eventually when we finish that, another Star Wars game here in the future. We might do rewatches of Rebels. There's a lot of stuff going on in Star Wars Live. Make sure you are subscribed. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.